All right, so now we're at 4.4, and this is graphing using vertex forms. So there's different forms for quadratic. You've already seen what the standard form is. That was the y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. And now we now know the vertex form. And so notice that this looks very familiar from when we were looking at the transformations. And, uh, and so if this is the case, and you ever see it in this form, you can say what the vertex is. Remember, this translated left to right. This translated the k value up or down. So what this was moving, it was moving the entire graph in that direction. So that h and k, remember the opposite of the h, this is your vertex, h comma k. So if you have an example like this where it's asked you to state the vertex, you take the opposite of the h, you keep the k the same, and you can say that the vertex in this case is 4 comma negative 6. And if you had to write an equation for a parabola where you're given the vertex and its a value, here's the vertex, here's the a value. So you'd have y equals, put the a value in the a value spot, which is 4, and then x minus h. So if it's positive 2, we must put it as minus 2 squared, and then we have to shift it negative 1 down. So that would be the equation in vertex form. We're going to talk another key feature. So we're going to be filling out this table here, similar to what we did uh, in 4.2, but... The only difference now is we have these ones on the end, domain and range. So we have to talk about what those are. So what domain is, domain is all the possible x values that can exist or fit on the graph. The range is all the possible y values. Now, domain and range are going to go through all the years, 11, 12, college, university. So make sure you understand what domain and range are. There's different forms that you can write it. You can do it in words. And there's also many different notations that you can do. So here's one, x, e, r, and then you do squiggly brackets. And so what this means in the domain section would be the x values, and then this is belongs to, and then the r is real, sorry, real numbers. And then you could have likewise in that form, you could have your squiggly brackets, y belongs to real numbers, and that would just be saying that the function can take every single y value possible on the graph. Now, the only thing that's different is we can add sort of restrictions or limits to them. And so this one, we could have, for example, y belongs to real numbers such that y has to be greater than or equal to 3, for example. So we can put restrictions on it at the end of the domain. Um, so we'll do an example. So no matter what, the range should always start with y belongs to real numbers, and the domain should always start with x belongs to real numbers, and then you would just say the restriction along with it. So in this example here, x squared minus 2, we've shifted our graph down 2. So here is our, um, our vertex at 0, comma, negative 2. So if we were to state the domain for this, what x values are possible? Meaning any x value that goes into this equation, will it give me a y value? So if I put an x value here, will it meet the function out here? Or if I put an x value out here, will it meet the function way out here? Yes, it will. No matter what the x value, I can put any x value in and it will work. So there are no restrictions on this domain. It is just x, e, r, all possible x values. And for the range, now we have to look at the y values here. So for any y value, if we put in its y value, are we going to be able to find a possible x value? Likewise here, if I put in negative 1, am I going to find a possible x value that goes with it? Now, here's one question, though. What if I put something down here like negative 5? If I put in negative 5, is it going to be possible for this equation? Is negative 5 going to touch this graph? One way you can check is you can go negative 5 equals x squared minus 2. Bring the 2 over. Negative 5 plus 2 equals x squared. That would be negative 3 equals x squared. Sorry, equals x squared. To take the square to the other side, you have to do the square root. Is it possible to take the square root of a negative? No. So with this here, our, our range has a restriction on it. We can't pick anything past this point. So the range for this one is still y, e, r, but all the y values that are possible are only the ones that are greater than zero, th than the negative 2. So that would be y equals greater than or equal to negative 2, and then squiggly brackets. So there's your range, and there's your domain. If you have questions, make sure you write that down, and on to now an example. So for this example, we have this equation, 
and we're going to have to state all of these possible things. So for this equation here, we should be able to state the vertex. We just said this is in vertex form. So we take the opposite of the first one, 1 comma negative 8. The direction of opening, we can get that from our a value. Remember, if it was positive, it opens up. If it's negative, it opens down. So this is positive 2. So we open up. Our axis of symmetry is the equation we get from the x value of our vertex. So it's x equals 1. Is there a vertical or horizontal translation? Well, yes, we have negative 1 here. So we shift 1 unit uh, to the, we'll say one unit to the right, and we have eight units down is the other vertical translation. Stretch or compression, because our a value is greater than one, this would be a stretch by a factor of two. Is there a reflection? Unless this is negative, there is no reflection. So is it a maximum or minimum? Well, if it's opening up, this is a low spot and then it goes back up. So this is a minimum value, which any positive value of A will always be a minimum. And so now we just have to talk about what our domain and range. Domain is every possible X value. And our range, now if we just do a quick sketch of this, we have a vertex of 1, comma, negative 8. And we also know from this that it opens up. So if this is a rough sketch, and we're talking about our range, the possible y values are only from this spot and upwards. So we are going to have y e r such that y must be greater than or equal to negative 8. And there's the range. So we're going to graph this example in a second. First we're going to talk about what step pattern is though. This is another tool that we can use to graph. So now we have table of values, we have technology, now we have vertex form, and in vertex form um, Instead of coming up with all these other details, x-intercepts, y-intercepts, uh, we can use our step pattern. And what the step pattern is, is it is um, a pattern that's always the same of moving the left to right. This pattern comes from the base graph of y equals x squared. And each point on that is 1, 3, 5. So if you look at the graph of x squared, each spot here, you go over 1, up 1, over 1, up 3 over 1, up 5, and the same on the other side, over 1, up 1, over 1, up 3, over 1, up 5, and then that creates your x squared graph. The only difference though is if there's a vertical stretch or compression, this changes the step pattern. So for example, if your equation is y equals 2x squared, then your step pattern will no longer be 1, 3, 5, it'll be 2 times the 1, 3, 5, and so then you have 2, 6, and 10 will be your new step pattern. So to do this, you find your vertex, then you'd move over 1, up 2, over 1, up 6, over 1, up 10. And you do that on both sides, over 1, up 2, over 1, up 6. And then you'd have your graph that way. But you must start with your vertex in order to use that. So we're going to take this equation here from the example, and we're going to graph it. So using the step pattern and our vertex, here are the steps to graph. So first you have to plot your vertex. So our vertex is 1 comma negative 8. So we go to 1 and we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and we plot our vertex. Then we use our step pattern of 1, 3, 5, but we have an a value of 2. So now it's actually 2, 6, 10. So from this point we move to the right and we move over 1 and we're going to go up 2 over 1, up 6, 5, 6, and then we could go over 1 and then up 10 again. We go to the other side, over 1, up 2, over 1, up 6, and notice the symmetry on both sides. And then you can connect your points, and it's a very quick way using the step pattern to create your graph, and it also, look at here, we got our y-intercept, we got our x-intercepts just from following the step pattern of 2, 6, 10, but the original one it was 1, 3, 5. So if you have any questions about step pattern, please make sure you write them down and bring them to class.